Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, what a day you have made today. Yeah, every day is special. Every single day you make it. But this one has a certain crisp in the air. It reminds us of seasons. Help us to worship you today. I give you all glory and honor. It's in the name of the triune of God and grace that we pray. Amen. Uh, pretty light on announcements today. Uh, first of all, um, if you want to grow an appreciation for what scares Pastor Pat, come over to this side of the balcony, stand up against this balcony right here with the railing and see how low it is. Then, don't go over to the other side here where there are three pieces of railing missing because then that'll really scare you. Okay, so, um, but you can see um, things are starting to happen. Uh, don't forget dinner with an elder. This is designed for you to get to know your elders. So when you look at the board and you see people that you don't really know, even if you know their name, you really, really, really never get a chance to know somebody until you're sitting around the table with them. Okay, so consider um, doing that. I heard that there was one last Saturday night that was just extraordinary. Um, and they are. They're, they're good opportunities for you to get a chance. Remember that Salt and Light Productions Music Man, um, they are going to be conducting auditions this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And you might be sitting there going, that's not for me. That's just not for me. You're wrong. You're wrong. Because they need one thing. They need the whole scope of generations in this one. So they need kids. They need teenagers. They need adults. They need seasoned citizens. <laughs> they need them all. And if you don't think I put my money where my mouth is, I've played Pontius Pilate. I've played Satan. Okay? I've never acted before until I got here. These people are crazy, but it is a wonderful opportunity to get a chance to meet other people in the church and to do something and be part of a sub-community that never, ever repeats itself. Because every cast is different, every play is different, every musical is different. So don't say no. Give it a chance. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, on the way out today, you will find this wonderful piece of paper. There is a lot of writing on this, but it's worth the read. This is about the two mission trips that are coming up in the fall. So if you are interested in the mission trip in November or December, please grab one of these. If you think that one of your family members who's not here would be interested, please grab one of these. These are open to families, okay? And that's important because not always do you get a mission trip that can allow you to have multi-generational type of mission trips. So um, yeah, so it's not just uh, I'm gonna get away from my kids for a week. Sometimes some of the best mission happens when you're doing it right alongside your own kids. Uh, let's see, um, yeah, don't forget that uh, Sunday, Sunday worships are now online on Yahoo, or Yahoo, YouTube. You can go to YouTube, you can go to our page on YouTube, you can go back and you can watch. Um, in case I used a word you didn't understand, you want to know what that word is, and then go look up the definition. Apparently I do that on occasion. Um, or if you just want to see it again, some of the folks who come on Wednesday nights, and we had been unpacking the sermons through the summer, they would go back and watch so that they can come prepared. That was their homework. It was kind of fun. So it's there for you if you find yourself away on a Sunday and you can't get to a church. Sit there at your computer and watch it, or on a TV, on a smart TV, whatever. Last but not least, are you coming down? I've got a minute for mission for Sunday school. Oh, okay. Today is John's. Which John? John Winstead. Did you know this? I guess we're not having a minute, minute for mission today. I guess this will be next week. Um, but remember that Sunday school sign up and kickoff is September 8th, okay? Um, and we also have lots of good adult programming as well, so um, you're not left out. Let us quiet our hearts and let us worship our God.
from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determined the number of the stars, and he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble, and he casts the wicked.
first in everything. Our Savior, our friend, our inspirer, our binder. You are ours, Lord, and we are yours. And we come to you here today give you all the glory with our song and with our prayer and with our shouts for you are our God and we are your people Lord as we come before you today we come with a mix of humbleness and exuberance because we can come to you in prayer so we present ourselves to you, a holy offering. We present our lives to you. Lord, hear the voices of your children as they pray out to you. We pray for Renee and Veronique and the boys in the camera room right now. We pray for doors to open and the obstacles to go away so he can bring his family home. Lord, we pray for families who are stretched out by distance. Especially adult children who care for or cannot be there to care for parents whose health is failing. Lord, we pray as a joyous church that you have called us by a name, each and every one of us, but you called us by a common name, a commonality that is bound together with the Holy Spirit. We are one, and we are one with you. So hear us, Lord, as we present our oneness to you with one mind, one spirit, and one voice, the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, you are all ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. You walk with him in ministry. You present his name and his good news to the world. Present yourselves now, symbolically as you present yourself, your gifts, your tithes, your offerings, your very lives to the triune God of grace.
we are yours. May we be acceptable in your sight. May this offering, this humble offering of the produce of our lives be used. <laughs> in the name of the Christ who is with us that we pray. Amen. So, from the Gospel of Mark, As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? They will not be left here, one stone upon another, that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. And when you hear... Big day today. Come on down. We have, we have to conduct two drives today. While they're coming down. Um, can we hear it from Jess again? song in worship and for the sheep. You know why, Mom? Why did your sister not come? Okay, she's out with Mimi and Grampy. <laughs> we got everybody? Okay. So what we're going to do after I'm done, so don't run off, we're going to draw for today's prize, but then we're going to put all the tickets from all along, and we're going to then draw for the grand prize, which is a USS Enterprise nightlight, <laughs> and a book that instead of fun with Dick and Jane, it's fun with Kirk and Spock. <laughs> Plus, whoever wins the grand pie prize gets the Mr. Spock hair and ears. So just saying, this is a big day in the life of this church, I can tell you that. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. This is getting good, I'm telling you. You guys all ready to go back to school? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell. I know who's happy they're going back up. They just chuckled. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. I knew it! I knew it because right now, there's a little girl out there with her Mimi and her Grampy who has a big giant gaping hole in her face. <laughs> because she lost yet another tooth. Is this Karen's tooth? It is. Because I know Charlie didn't lose a tooth yet, did he? Not yet, okay. It's a tooth. It's a tooth. It came out of somebody who's going into first grade. Right? Good. I think I know the story. When we lose 
our baby teeth, okay, it shows a transition. And yes, I call them baby teeth because we're gonna, you're going to lose teeth all along. But it shows as they come out that you're growing up. And in faith, we grow up. Paul, the Apostle Paul even said, some of you drink milk. Others eat more solid food. He talks about even growing up in faith. So we don't just grow up physically. We don't just grow up mentally and emotionally. We grow up spiritually. God. And every once in a while, we get a wonderful example of watching somebody have grown growing up. Just like Jess. <laughs> who has been in this church all of her life. And she's grown up in front of all of these people. And she has professed her faith. She serves as a deacon of the church. And she's going to be a senior in high school. She went to cheerleading uh, uh, on, on Friday. That's a good one. She got home cheerleading camp, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then was able to fit a song in and sing so that we could all be deeply moved by Christ with us. My hope and prayer is, is that as you guys grow and as you lose teeth and as you progress, I hope you grow also in the Lord so that you can show people who your Lord is, okay? So let's pray to him. Lord, we pray for growth. We pray, pray for transitions. We pray for the fact that each and every one of these children are moving to yet another stage, whether it's to preschool or from preschool to kindergarten elementary school, and even our middle schoolers and our high schools, we, we pray for our colleges, we pray for all who grow, who grow in faith. <laughs> help us to help them see you around every corner. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. So Charlie, you need to hold on to this for Kira, okay? Because this might be worth money. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. <coughs> Somebody else has been picking them all along. But remember, on this particular drawing, if you've already won, you can't win again, okay? But you can win the big prize. Okay, so let's see whose name comes up out of here. And it is... Lolly. All right, Lolly. I've got one for you. Do you want Captain Kirk and Tribble? Both? Or do you want a deck of cards with Captain Kirk? Tribbles are cute. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Stick around after church so we can take your picture with the, with the Mr. Spock here. Bruce, come here. Come hither. And it's the big prize time. Completely random. And it is... And of course, she's not here. Charlotte Lapp. So Charlotte Lapp is the winner. Now, this came from Kira, so it's got to go to a boy. DJ going to be here next week? Yeah. We're up there. We keep moving. DJ. And you need to make it extra special because next week, Mr. Young is preaching. So it should be something existential. Right? <laughs> something with, mommy will explain that to you. Okay? The rest of you, get out of here.
I think I can hear some of your phones clicking right now, but we're existential. <laughs> as long as Mr. Young knows what it means, and he does, because he's the most existential person I know. From the Apostle Paul. Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this manner because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more, and to aspire to live quietly, and to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands, as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. Okay, so a little backstory here. I had 11 Star Trek sermons, but I only had 10 slots. So I had to drop off number 11. And then several weeks ago, Karen comes to me, and she comes to me with a song that you're going to hear in a little while called Touch the Sky. And I went, well, if that isn't a sign, you see, because sermon number 11 is called I Touch the Sky. So here goes. In ancient Israel, the way the structure of Israel was set up, you had the temple. And in the temple was the Holy of Holies. This is where you would go to encounter God, was at the temple. But only one person every year was allowed to go into that Holy of Holies. Only one person could go in and perform the rites and the rituals and to be in the presence of God. And this was a scary thing. You see, because if they feared that if this priest was not in the proper manner of holiness, God could strike him down in the Holy of Holies. So they would keep him up all night. They would make him fast. They would make him pray. They would make sure that he, wasn't sin that he was sinless, that he was clean before he went in. And then just in case, they tied a rope on him. So when he went in behind the curtain, and it wasn't like a small curtain, this thing was like 10 meters high and a whole bunch wide. He would go into the Holy of Holies, and just in case he died, they could pull his body out. It was a scary thing to go before a holy God. Everybody else, basically, including the other priests, were kind of on the periphery. The other priests were out there, ready to pull the dead guy out if that happened. But then there was all the people, and they were following a series of rules. And over generation after generation after generation, they followed rules. They made up more rules. They followed those rules. They kept going and going and going. And you get what is called design creep. They had kind of lost over the generations. They had kind of been doing the same thing over and over again. They kind of lost who they were. They kind of lost whose they were. And they were just kind of going through the motions. And this was going down a real bad path. 
until one day, a man walks into Jerusalem and tells them the truth. But before him was his cousin. And his cousin was kind of crazy, kind of weird, kind of exotic. And he said, the kingdom of God is coming. But he himself was one of the people. He wasn't the Messiah. Some people thought he was. And he kept saying, no, it's not me. There's another coming who's way, way beyond me. The other was his cousin who told him the truth. Told him the truth about what leads to life. Told them told the truth about the danger of death and sin. He taught them. He loved them. And then most of all, he modeled for them what it means to give your life to God. You see, because he was God. He gave his life on the cross. Well, that's all fine and good, Pastor. How's this get to Star Trek? <laughs> By the third way through the third season, the final season of the original series of Star Trek, was an episode where the Enterprise encounters an asteroid. Not a planet, an asteroid. About 200 miles in diameter, coming through space. It appears to be lifeless, <coughs> but it is heading on a trajectory toward a planet with 3.7 million people on it. And if it hits that planet in about a year, it's going to kill. It's going to kill everybody on the planet. So they get their scanners and they figure out that it's not an asteroid, that it's actually under locomotion. It's a ship. The outside looks like an asteroid, but this outer shell is a sphere. It's a hollow sphere. And inside the sphere, connected to the outer sphere, is a central core sphere, but it's solid. So, of course, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy have to go down and see what this is all about. So they beam inside the sphere on the surface of the solid sphere. And what they discover is it looks just like a planet. They're on the ground. They're the, they know that the inner shell of the bigger sphere looks like the sky. And there are attachments between the two to hold it up that basically look like mountains. They see all of this, but there's no life signs. So they've got to figure out how to get this asteroid in a different direction so it doesn't hit the planet it's aimed at. Just then, doors open up. People emerge out of the inner core. There are people. As time goes on, they start to learn about these people. These people have been on this asteroid ship for 10,000 years. They don't even know that they're on a ship. They believe that they are on the planet Yanada. They believe this is their planet. They have lived underground in the planet of Yanada because the other ground is just not hospitable. So they live underground. They've dwelled underground. They have a religion based on their god known as the Oracle. There is a central room that's like the Holy of Holies. And this is where their priestess, Natira, goes to talk to the oracle. Nobody else talks to the oracle, only Natira. Yes, guards can go in with her, others can go in, but she is the mouthpiece. There's a whole world in this little ship of 200 miles in diameter. There's a whole religion. They're all self-contained. They don't even know about people in the outside world. They don't know anything because they're all contained within the sphere. And all they know is the sphere. And all they know is each other. And all they know is that the oracle is in charge. That's all they know. Which presents a conundrum for the landing party. 
how do they get to change the trajectory of this asteroid ship to save not only the 3.7 million, but the people who live on Yanada. How do they do that? How does the one whose name means church, Kirk, help them? How does the first officer, who is half human and half Vulcan, and yet fully both, help them? How does the good physician help them? So they're talking about this in their room, about how are we going to do this, and in walks this strange little old man. This strange little old man who walks in kind of just weird, out of the middle of nowhere. And he says, you know, just spontaneously he shares this, when I was young, I went to the service. And I climbed the mountain. And I touched the sky. And then he looked at them and said, for the world is hollow. And I have touched the sky. The little old man who's not a priestess, who's not in charge, who's not in a position of leadership, the little old prophetic character tells them the truth, tells them that he knows that his people are on something that isn't a planet because it has an artificial sky that he's touching. As soon as he tells that, a little red light comes on in his head and he drops dead because he dared to think beyond Oracle. He dared to think beyond the thing in the Holy of Holies. He dared to share that with somebody else and he was struck down because he actually shared that maybe, just maybe, none of what they know is really all there is. To make a long story short, when Kirk and Spock go and sneak into the Holy of Holies to try to find out how to change direction, Oracle attacks them. But they survive and eventually beat Oracle, which is nothing more than a supercomputer charged with caring for these people and caring for the asteroid ship. But they have to find the holy book in order to defeat the oracle and get to the computer to change the direction and everybody is saved. Episode over. Wow, what a story. Churches do this and churches have done this for generations. Churches have the tendency to become very insular. They come about, they, they live within the outer shell. They live in their own little world. They do their own little things. They worship their own little God. And very seldom do they ever buck against the trend. They just move forward because after all, that's the way we've always do, done it. And as time goes on, they can lose the meaning of who they are and whose they are. The fact that they have a whole role to play in the universe, that there's a whole big universe out there, and a creator who made it all, a savior who was trying to change the trajectory and did. But we could lose that meaning along the way. We could lose that meaning. I hope our world is not hollow. I hope our world is not hollow. I hope it is not tied to the things that we've done for hundreds or maybe even eons. No, I guess it wouldn't be eons. But for two, two, three, four, five centuries, 
You see, because our life is now. Our place is now. And when we get caught up in the trappings, when we get caught up in the shell, when we just kind of go about our business and we forget the mission to be able to reach those out there, which is God's mandate, to share that one comes who's going to change the tra trajectory of each and every human life. Our job is to be like the little old man. To be like the little old man and tell the truth. Not truth that beats you up, but just truth that there's something bigger than this shell. There's something bigger than our life. It's grand and beautiful and wonderful. Our job is to tell the truth. My job is to tell the truth. When I arrived here over seven years ago, there were people like, who is this maniac? <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, for the world is hollow. I have touched the sky. I know there's something more out there, and I want you to know that. Bruce, is there a glowing red spot on my head? <laughs> no? Okay, good. Because if I collapse, he's, in, you know, he's got it. My point is, you are also to be that. We are not the saviors. We're not the ones to change the trajectory. We're the ones to, for, to show the reality of what it is. Churches get hung up on really, really crazy stuff. And they fight over really, really crazy stuff when it's all about worship. It's all about service. It is all about love. It is all about these things that we do for God, not for ourselves. As a church, we call ourselves Christ-centered. We call ourselves Bible-based. We call ourselves a church called to exemplify God's love. When a church goes against that mission, they get in trouble. The world around us that we dwell in every single day isn't Christ-centered, it's self-centered. The world around us isn't Bible-based, it's emotion-based and feeling-based. The world around us isn't called to exemplify God's love in the world. They're all about narcissism. Isn't it interesting how the mission statement that you developed eight or nine years ago still holds true today as a contrast as a turn the world upside down mission statement compared to what is going on out there. So I hope your own individual worlds are not hollow. I hope that this church is not hollow. But just in case we are, I remind you again. I and you have touched the sky. He's out there beyond all of this. Our sacred call, our sacred life, as Paul calls it, to live holy, to live love for God, to live love for neighbor. Paul sums it up so beautifully. What a wonderful, wonderful trek it's been. We still have so much more to explore. Faith. The final frontier. Listen to the words. Faith. The final frontier. This is the journey of the First Presbyterian Church of Sparta, the church's mission.
mission to explore deeper truth, to seek renewed devotion and new ways to serve, to boldly love as no church has loved before. Now go live it. Let us stand together. We have an excerpt from a brief statement of faith, a document that was uh, put together in the 1990s as a modern understanding of people's faith in the church. So let us read together. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles, rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks, and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus.
ago, one materialized on this planet to point us in a direction of life, in a direction of love, in a direction of salvation. Changed our course forever, and he gave us his name. We are called the Church of Jesus Christ, the Kirk of Jesus Christ. As you go out into the world, understand that the world out there is hollow. You need to show them to touch the sky because there's something beyond it, so beyond it. As you go out, go out with this blessing. Christ before you, Christ behind you, Christ above you, Christ below you, Christ on the right of you, Christ to the left of you. Christ when you sit down, Christ when you lay down, Christ when you stand up, Christ when you walk, Christ within you. Christ be with you. Christ be in the eyes of everyone who sees you, in the mouths of everyone who speaks of you. For they need to see him through you. I bless you in the name of the triune God of grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Shalom. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.